Welcome to a new video about controller design. This is our example number two. In this example, I would like to discuss the PI controller design using the frequency response method. So we have discussed in the example number one, specifically the P controller. This time we will discuss the PI controller. So we will see how we do that, specifically using the frequency response method, using the phase margin and that kind of things in the frequency domain. So we will, of course, step by step work out the calculations and also verify these in MATLAB simulations. So let's look at our example. We have the following feedback system given. We have the PI control here and we have the plant. It is in the unity gain feedback configuration. The plant transfer function is shown here, which is a third order system. You see the pole at the origin, pole at minus 36 and also at minus 100. We like to design a PI controller such that this PI controlled system has zero velocity error for a unit ramp input and it has a phase margin at least 5 degrees more than the PE controlled system while having a maximum overshoot of 10%. So there are a couple of parameters specifications here together. First let's talk about the velocity error before we move on. The velocity error is the error you have when you have the unit ramp input in this case which is given. That must be zero. Now we have an S already one pure integrator. And that PI control will also contribute one integrator which is also a pole at the origin. So you get the two integrators and that will definitely make this velocity error zero. So this condition is definitely already fulfilled. But for the phase margin we will look at the P control system first and then decide how much we need to add using the PI controller still of course having a maximum overshoot of 10%. Before we move on let's also discuss what the PI controller is in the diagram format. We have of course the proportional part but also the integral part now and that again will be the combined here in parallel combination which makes this PI controller. Now K1 plus the K2 over S is then just a summation here for the PI controller. This is here the expression that can be also written in this format just using some multiplications in the fraction. So you get K1 times S over S and take these two fractions together and also divide it at the, take out the parentheses such that you see the zero and also the PI gain directly. And now when you look at this, you can see the KPI must be K1 and the zero of this PI control was then K2 over K1. This is what you also similar uh, have seen in the root logos method and then we have this expression. Okay, let's move on looking at the solutions. Now we start first with the P controlled system because that is our reference and then we need to at least have a five degrees more phase margin in the PI control system. Of course, keeping that maximum overshoot. We start, for example, for this case, of course, with the, uh, the overshoot specification because that is 10%. And for that, we need this formula. Of course, assuming again, it is a pure second order system, which is not, but still we do that. And we will see later that we can adjust that by actually adding some more phase safety margin to get that value we want at least five degrees more. So this damping ratio zeta will be then calculated using this formula. The MP here is in the scalar, so it's not 10, but 0 0.10. So you divide by 100. So you substitute the values in here, you get 0 0.591 approximately. Okay. Now you get now another pro, uh, uh, equation, which is then calculation of the phase margin. That is using this formula in the frequency domain, using the phase margin. That is then the zeta we just have calculated in this formula. I don't derive this formula, I just use it here. So if you now substitute the value we just determined for our damping ratio, you will get 59 degrees. Now we have now our reference. We need 50, we have 59 degrees for our peak control system. We need at least five more. Yeah. So let's now look at the PI control system. And that must then contribute five more than this one at least. So before we move on, let's also discuss what we have when we use a PI controller. Now we need to increase this phase margin at least by 5 degrees compared to the P control system. But we know 
the PI controller will contribute negative phase because the pole is at the origin and the zero is definitely right left of that uh, uh, pole so we will get negative phase so we need to compensate that so the compensation of this negative phase can be done by adding some extra phase or phase margin that will then uh, cancel or make that uh, negative phase a little bit positive or maybe exactly zero depending on the value so we just add some extra phase let's say 10 degrees you can also have five or eight degrees depending on how much safety you want of course increasing this will also make maybe the design a little bit difficult or complicated so we add extra phase of 10 degrees on top of that five degrees we need we need to have on top of that 59 degrees so in total you get here 59 we already had plus five we just need at least and then plus 10 which is the safety margin so we get then in total 74 for the pi control system so in summary the required phase margin for our pi control system must be 74 so instead of 64 we go to 74 so 10 degrees more okay that's what we need so pi controlled system first start we continue with now the phase margin frequency which is omega pm for this pi controlled system first let's set up the loop transfer function the loop transfer function is always the complete loop of this diagram which is the controller times plan times one which is now in this case just unity gain feedback then this transfer function will be produced you see the 100 kp plus times the zero location the s plus the zpi over this expression now when you convert this now the j omega domain just using the s is equal to j omega you will get this you see of course the s squared so it will give you minus omega squared here okay now let's also calculate now the situation specifically for the phase margin frequency we know we require some phase margin for this pi control system which was 74. now in order to calculate the specific frequency which will make this phase margin of 74 degrees we need to substitute the pm which is the required 74 in this expression and then determine what frequency will produce that now the argument or the phase of this loop transfer function can be calculated using this formula you see the minus here so minus of that thing and that will just give you minus 90 degrees and you have also the negative the phase conversion of this part which is this minus arc tangent omega pm over 36 in a similar form for this part which is shown here and that must add up to minus 180 degrees plus 74 because that was a pm will give you minus 106 degrees so we need to solve this how can we solve this you can solve this using your for example your calculator and it will give you 7.47 degrees uh, radians per second i must say so we have now our phase margin frequency okay next step is really an estimation or a rule of thumb we select our controller zero the zpi which is shown here as one decade lower we can also take a little bit uh, more than that then the phase margin frequency we just calculated so it means the following the zpi must be then 10 times smaller that is one decade lower so you can also calculate that in this form then 7.747 over 10 that will give you 0.747 of course you can say i will just take 0.7 so a little bit small than 10 times so that's also possible okay then the pi control will be then given by this expression in the j omega domain we have now our zpi and that is now our expression we will use in the next steps okay then we have the loop transfer function is given by this expression which is now here now substitute the zpi now taking together everything here we will have now the following calculate the pi controller gain which is now this let's do that how do we calculate the kpi now for the phase margin condition we know at that phase margin frequency the loop transfer function magnitude must be one that means then the following i will take the magnitude of the numerator divided by the magnitude of the 
denominator, that must be equated to 1. I see the following. I have here the 100 kpi and the square root of the imaginary part and the real part separately. In a similar format also for the denominator. Now that must be then equal to 1. Of course you can solve this again using your calculator. That will give you a kpi of 274. Okay. We have now our KPI also, that means we have the complete transfer function in the j omega domain, that's shown here, and that will be then given by this expression. Of course, in the Laplace domain, it is given by this expression, just substitute for the j omega s. This is what we wanted, so we have our PI controller, but let's of course check that. This is really the case in the simulations. So first, we start with the frequency response, the body plot for this situation. This is the transfer function of the plant, this is the control we just designed, and we have now the loop transfer function using this PI controller. You see now two labels, this is the interesting label we want, which is the label where it is showing the phase margin, also the phase margin frequency. You'll read here 68.3 degrees, and also the phase margin frequency is 7.47 radians per second. This is exactly the same as we have calculated, and this is a little bit smaller than what we have anticipated as the 74, but that was also the phase margin we wanted because the phase margin for the peak control system was 59, and we need to go up by at least 5, that means to 64. We are above of that one, which is then 68.3, so that is perfectly fine. So we have achieved our goal by taking that phase safety margin, so that was definitely required. Okay, again, an Another check, which is then transfer response using the unit step response. Now we have the unit step response here. We just apply a unit step input, and that is now the feedback control system, the closed loop system for this PI control system. This is then the transfer function. T, T is for the total. We use the gain, Mason's gain rule. We have this expression again, the plant and the PI controller. Specification first is the overshoot, which is here 8.17%. And you can now summarize the values for the rise time, the overshoot, the peak time, static time, the final value, and also the set state error for the specific case. We see that the overshoot is 8.17, which is definitely small than 10%, so that is perfect. We see also the rise time and all the values, and you see then that this also fulfilled our specifications here according to the required values. If you do this in the peak control for, for variation, you will see a smaller rise time, a smaller set leg time, so the system is actually much faster, and also the overshoot is actually below the 10%, so 10%, uh, but the phase margin is not what we wanted, so that is really what, he required, what is required here. And on top of that, the velocity error will not be zero, because the velocity error is zero, because there is an extra pole at the origin, which is added by the PI controller. That's the reason for having the velocity error, which is zero. We haven't checked that in the simulator, but that is definitely the case because we have now an S squared in the denominator of our loop transfer function. All right, this is our example number two about the PI controller design using the frequency response method. If you have any questions, comments about this, please let me know, I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video about the PD control using the frequency response method. So stay tuned and see you next time. Take care.